this will inevitably feel like another kick in the teeth in the sense that they would want to go to court. They would want, they hear their victim impact statements. They want the perpetrator to hear that and to hear their sentence and to see them as part of the justice process. And they are going to be denied that today. They are, but um, I'm not entirely sure that they would necessarily like what would happen if she was forced into the dock. Um, if we take a step back from her for a moment and just imagine what could happen in any case where you force someone into the dock, the sentencing exercise is one of the most serious and important parts of a trial. The judge is setting out the findings of fact and he is setting out the sentence and explaining exactly why he's come to that sentence. And it's all about the victims. It's all about the victim's family and the law. And the last thing that you would want to do would be to run the risk of reducing it to some sort of circus. And you can easily imagine how a defendant, I'm not talking about Lucy Letby, I know nothing about that woman, but um, you can imagine circumstances where someone hijacks the case effectively by talking at length about how and loudly about how innocent they are, how the jury's got it all wrong by disrupting proceedings, um, or even by crying very loudly and making themselves the centre of attention when the attention really needs to be elsewhere. And then there are practical difficulties if you think about it. You know, if someone really doesn't want to be there and you carry them effectively kicking and screaming into the dock, what do you do if they put their fingers in their ears or close their eyes? Are we, are we really going to force their eyes open? Are we, how do we cope with this? So I don't think anyone, when you begin to think it through, thinks there's a, a way you can make people come into the dock. What you could do would be to impose a punishment if they didn't come into the dock. Such so as what? Be... Such as what? Because I suppose if someone's well, getting a full life sentence in any case, yeah. they're perhaps they're, it's difficult to incentivize them with the promise of an extra yeah. few months or years you're, or whatever it is. You're way ahead of me. That's exactly what I was going to say. In a case like this, if she gets a whole life sentence, um, what on earth could the judge do or say that would um, encourage her to come into the dock? Of course, most people, almost all people who commit murders don't get whole life sentences. They get a life sentence mm. because that is the only sentence that you can get for murder. But then the judge will impose the minimum term that has to be served before they can apply for parole. And it might be 15 or 25 or 30 years or more. And in those circumstances, if it were clear, for example, not perhaps so much that they serve a bit longer, because I think if you're serving 15 years, as you rightly say, nine months is unlikely to make the difference. But if they thought it might make the difference as to whether they got parole or not, because the parole board would be looking for remorse and understanding of what they had done and a demonstration of that, if they thought it might affect their chances of getting parole, that might encourage them to come. But in the case of someone like um, like Letby, where the sentence is either going to be whole life, or if it weren't, it will be such a long sentence that it will be the equivalent of that. I, I think you're absolutely right. It's hard to think what you could do that would encourage her to walk into the dock. 